Welcome back to Switch to Linux. This is Tom and a cute little kitty. And we are here to talk today about um, this, <laughs> this issue with the, uh, with the head of the Linux Foundation saying this is the year of the Linux desktop and he's running Mac OS. <laughs> mm. A little embarrassing actually. Um, and so uh, Jim Zemlin, um, of course, uh, is, did a, there was a conference from the Linux Foundation today uh, about uh, about using Linux and, and declaring that, that it's free and open source software and simultaneously uh, he's not even using Linux at this conference. Of course, um, I've saw, seen a couple of the headlines here. I just took the time to watch Brian Lenduke's video here. So if you get a chance to come over and check out Brian Lenduke's uh, show today. Um, probably published just just uh, you know within an hour or so of this is my guess. Um, watch his thoughts and comments. Um, but I kind of want to comment on this and, and let you know what I use, why I use, and, and where I use. Of course, this is Switch to Linux. Um, and uh, usually I'd be doing some something Linuxy related on today's video, but I decided today what I was going to do is just talk about this and table what I was going to do today. I'm going to do it live tomorrow. So tomorrow I'm going to do a 5 o'clock live stream because I have some other things to do later in the evening. But what we are going to do tomorrow is set up a, uh, a, a Ubuntu 17.10 beta for use as my media PC. So I oftentimes rotate what my media PC is throughout the, um, uh, throughout the months. So I'll run, about, run it for about a month or so, so that way I get a better accurate impression. Uh, so running Ubuntu is going to give me, first it's going to give me just just the, um, it's going to force me to use a desktop environment that I would not otherwise use, and that's GNOME. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of GNOME, but I'm going to force myself to use it for about a month. I'm going to see how it is, and then I'm also going to be able to uh, let people know about the stability of it, realizing this is still a beta version. But also, you know, if I encounter any bugs or anything, I'm going to leave all that bug reporting on so that uh, hopefully we can get some useful information for Ubuntu uh, as well, uh, leading up into their uh, into their system. Uh, so I'm recording this video today on the same computer I did yesterday, except now I am actually on the Mate desktop. Uh, so this computer does boot into uh, Mate, Plasma, Cinnamon, and Kodi. And uh, yesterday, usually I'm I've been recording this on the um, on the Plasma. Yesterday I did a video on this computer on the Cinnamon desktop. So now I thought I'd go ahead and use my Mate desktop. So this is I mean this is how different this computer is. I just load it up how it is, and this one actually does give me the ability to run my camera full screen, although still not as high quality as I as I get on on my other computers. Uh, so hopefully. Hopefully tomorrow as I do a live stream, it will be the first time I attempt a live stream from this computer even as we uh, attempt to do it through Ubuntu. So we're going to see what happens. We might flop. It might flop tomorrow. Scary. But we'll give it a try. Uh, but regardless, I want to talk about today uh, what I use, why I use, where I use, and the various devices that I have around here because this office is not a pure Linux office. And understand that I'm a developer, so I need to make sure things work. And, and not only am I a developer, I'm a front-end QIQX developer, so I really have to know that things are working well on Safari and on a Mac and on a Windows. So what are the extent of the computers I use and why? Well, first, every video that I do and everything that I do here is helping to support and to promote Linux. And so I run my videos on a Linux system rather than anywhere else. You know, I don't want to be doing videos on Windows on this channel, with the exception of I do have a few early videos where I showed you how you could experiment with Linux without dumping your operating system. So I do have a couple older videos on this channel that were recorded on a Mac and were recorded on a Windows computer just to show you how you can experiment and test with Linux. Because take note of the video that I did last week that we don't want to convert somebody to Linux just by saying wipe your hard drive install Linux on it and then uh, you know and, and then never use anything else again well the problem with doing that is uh, there it takes uh, some change in some workflow it takes some change in some software are you willing to convert your software and learn some new software packages for the purpose of having a free uh, uh, you know a free desktop and in, in terms of having freedom and, and by that I'm gonna mean not having a system that's going to force you to 
uh, you know, to data collect or force you into the Windows or the Apple ecosystem, but really truly have choice in your desktop. And so that's really what I'm doing. But understand, I came to Linux because of the craziness in Windows 10. And so I'm not a long, long time Linux user. I'm just a computer geek who got frustrated with Windows and said, screw it, I'm going to Linux. And so that's the perspective I'm coming with. So with that being said, what do I have and what do I run? Well, over here, you can see the keyboard and the mouse for it. But just off screen here, I actually have a Windows 7 computer. This is where the majority of my web development is done. And the reason I use this for the majority of my web development is because I have, I've been running this web design company for seven years off of this computer. In fact, this is the first computer I bought when I started this company, and I'm still running the computer. And uh, it will probably go on for all eternity because I think I've replaced almost every component in the computer as times have, have gone on. You know, I've, I've replaced two processor fans, two or three keyboards, a couple screens. Um, I think I've replaced the bedwells, the hinges. I've added RAM. I think the hard drive, the processor, and the motherboard are original. <laughs> Um, but this computer is a beast. I absolutely love it, and, and it still runs today like the day I pulled it out of the box. I also am still running the Windows computer because when I started the business, um, Adobe CS5 came out, and with CS5 coming out, CS4 was really, really cheap if you could still find a copy, and Amazon had three copies left, and I paid you know $1,000 to buy a copy of Adobe CS4. And so I still run a lot of my business on CS4 when I'm in my front end office. Now, when this computer dies, I will not, absolutely not be porting to Windows 10. It will not happen. I have a Windows 10 computer, pardon me, kitty, right here. You'll notice that this Windows 10 computer does, well, it's not even very good. It has no integrated microphones, no integrated cameras, no integrated anything, and I disabled the Wi-Fi. Um, because this computer is in my office in case I'm dealing with a client who's on Windows 10 and I need to support somebody running Windows 10. This guy is sitting here. I can say, give me a moment. I'll plug this bad boy in. I'll boot this thing up, and I will be able to help a client on Windows 10. Um, but I don't use Windows 10. Um, I, I refuse, in fact, to use Windows 10. Um, I have over to the other side of this computer actually sits a Mac. And all it is is actually just much the same. It's a crappy little mini Mac. Um, and I bought it because as a front-end developer, I have to make sure things are working on a Mac system. And so I have that computer set up. Now, fortunately, the Mac computer has not yet crippled Skype. <laughs> and so um, that computer, the Mac computer, can still run Skype. So I use that for business communication. And I check a few emails, um, just a few um uh, IMAP emails that are required on some projects that I don't want to filter into my other email platforms. And so that guy there, it runs a Mac. I don't really do any work on it. Occasionally I'll do a few little web-based applications with it, um, do a little bit of emailing and Skype and a couple of, of odds and ends internet browsing, and that's about it. So I do have a Mac here. Again, it's mostly here so I can support somebody who has questions on a Mac. Um, but for most of my work, I am migrating things. And again, watch that video from last Monday where I talk about how to properly migrate uh, somebody because that is the purpose of this computer here. So this computer here, I actually, I bought this shortly after switching over to Linux and this thing only runs Linux. I bought it as a, um, it was like a $300. In fact, I talked the guy down even more. Uh, it was a $300 computer. Um, but it's, it's actually really good. It's, um, eight gigs of Ram. It's got a, uh, it's got a core i5 processor. I think a fifth generation core i5. Um, very, very nice computer. And this guy here, it runs, I brought it home. I booted it into windows 10 just to make sure all the components of the computer worked. Once I verified all the components of the computer worked, um, wiped everything and I've installed Linux mint on that. And so the day this windows computer stops running, I won't even move it right away. This computer just simply gets set right on top of it. The docking station flips over onto this one and I have not lost 
any time. This computer is completely set up for every bit of web design, considering all of my email, all of my applications, all of my data, everything that I need to run my business is also on this computer, which runs only Linux. All right. Um, now I also have, I have another Windows computer here. Um, and this Windows computer is actually a Surface Pro 1. And I've considered wiping it uh, and installing something else on it. I'm just kind of decided I'm just going to kind of keep it in Windows where it is. This is one of my two writing computers. So, of course, I write books. And so this is one of the computers. And I got this, again, before I switched to Linux. And so I just kind of decided to go ahead and keep it. It has, it has um, Firefox installed. Uh, Microsoft Office, and I'm actually moving over to Libre. My, in fact, Microsoft Office is on here just because I'm still wrapping up a book that I started before I moved over to Linux that's on here. Um, and then actually I'm going to probably keep this at Windows but run LibreOffice on it once I get that system done. Um, because my next computer is my second writing computer. And this one here, actually I just wrote an entire book on this computer. I'm formatting everything. I have all the software on here to create the ebook. Through GIMP, I'm using uh, GIMP, I'm using Inkscape, I'm using uh, Sigil, I'm using Calibri, um, and I'm using LibreOffice. All of that is going to allow me to write a book, publish a book, format it for print publishing, uh, create the ebook, format the ebook, publish the ebook, everything. Pure, open source, free software. This computer runs Peppermint. So that is this computer here. And then, of course, I have my main video computer, uh, which is um, shut down right now because I'm installing Ubuntu. Um, I'm I use this computer to install operating systems because of the IC dock. I can turn off all the hard drives. So I don't have to mess with which hard drives which. Just install them, whatever's there. Um, and so that runs only uh, Linux Mint as well. So that is kind of the thing. So the take-home message here is is... I want to push people into examining, playing with, and experiment with other operating systems. I'm not saying dump everything and completely switch. But what I am saying is that we have to take into account the fact that if we're going to be promoting Linux, the majority of what we do had better be on Linux. In fact, even this Windows computer that I'm writing, when I go to format these last books, I'm porting all those books over to uh, over to the Linux computer because I don't have all the software on the Windows computer to to do all the ebook stuff. And although most of it's probably available, I'm not going to learn the Windows version of it. It's, there's no point. There is no point. Once the book is done. It's getting saved into one document. I'm porting it into the Linux computer, and then I'm going to proceed with my uh, with my for book formatting. And so everything there, that's the direction. And that's the direction that we want to move in, that we want to push towards, is we want to get to that point where we have the ability to sit here and say, Okay, I am going to uh, I'm going to start moving things over, but I'm not going to dump everything that I know. I'm going to slowly move over so that when the current computer dies, I'm not going to replace it with another Windows computer. I am ready to go on Linux. And that's why I've been doing GIMP tutorials, and I apologize I haven't done one for about a month, but I've been doing GIMP tutorials to benefit me. I am an absolute expert on Photoshop. I'm getting that good on GIMP. I'm getting there on GIMP. I'm not completely there on GIMP, but I am almost there. Um, but once this computer's done and Photoshop's done and you know all that other stuff's done, I don't need Dreamweaver anymore. I got Bluefish now. Frankly, I like Bluefish a little bit better. Um, I don't need Photoshop anymore. I got GIMP. I don't need Windows anymore. I got Linux. And that's the purpose of moving slowly. Get another computer, install Linux on another computer, and slowly get yourself into that workflow. Take uh, the tips from that video last Monday where I talk about finding the open source cross-platform software and install it on your existing platform so you can get used to it, so you can migrate better. So as for me, I'm using Linux. And I gotta say that, you know, last year about this time, uh, it was last, I think it was last October, um, or was it November? I forget exactly when it was. But last year it was funny because I did a conference with our um, uh, with our uh, local chamber of commerce, and I was 
doing a presentation on websites and stuff, and I use my Linux Mint computer. And the funny thing is, there were three presentations in that room, and I and, and it was funny because I came in with the Linux Mint computer, one person came in with their new MacBook Pro, and one person came in with their new Surface Pro. Surface Pro person was even an IT guy, which is kind of funny because I go in there to do mine. I plug this guy right into the HDMI. The Linux computer knew exactly what to do. I didn't skip a single beat. I had no messing with configurations, nothing. I plugged the projector into this computer. It exactly did exactly what I needed to do. It displayed my LibreOffice presentation uh, on up on the screen while giving me my, my presentation dashboard, and I went through and did my presentation. Wouldn't you know it, the guy with the Apple comes in, he plugs into that thing. I think it was a she, actually. She plugs into, into that projector, and it wouldn't work. And I had to come up, and because I know how Macs work, I had to come up and mess with some things, get the thing set up so she could actually do her presentation and still have her notes on her screen. Same thing happened with the Surface. You know, Linux is getting it down, folks. This is the year of the Linux desktop, and we don't need to be running Mac computers to prove that. If we're interested in uh, helping people move over to Linux, then we need to take it seriously and move to Linux ourselves. Does that mean we dump everything else? No. I'm a developer. I got to always have other operating systems. So I have them laying around, but I'm not ready to use them. And I will not do any work on Windows 10. And I'm certainly not going to pay any money to put any software on a Mac. And I'm certainly not going to pay money for a Mac. I mean, I bought mine. Mine was a scratch and dent return used they discounted the thing down because it is ugly. It's got some scratches on the top of it. So I think I ended up paying like 400 bucks for my Mac Mini. It's a great Mac for 400 bucks. I would not expect to do anything else with, real with it. But I got it because I just needed to have an, a Mac in the office just so that I can make sure things are working over there. You know, but for the most part, here at Switch to Linux, I use Linux for everything I don't that, that I can. When I travel, it's Linux development all the, all the way. I don't have a Windows computer that travels with me anymore. Um, when I'm in the office, I still will use the Windows 7 computer until the Windows 7 computer dies or becomes totally obsolete, in which case, eh, sorry, Windows computer. You'll probably get something like, you know, cubes installed on you or something. I don't know. But regardless, uh, that's what I wanted to say, and that's what I wanted to contribute to that. Uh, to the conversation here, so I will also call this gentleman out. You know, you know, this Jim Zemlin, you know way more about Linux than I do, but you know what? At least I'm using Linux on a regular basis. <laughs> so that's kind of what I have to say about that. Um, so also, by the way, just check out Brian Linduke's video here um, and, uh, you know, have a look over there comment like to that guy you'll see it says i'm not subscribed that's because i'm on my firefox install it's my uh my chromium is where i stay logged into um uh into youtube so uh, i am subbed to brian and i would encourage you to do so as well so with that um thanks for watching folks i hope that you enjoy switching to linux and again join us uh what day is it going to be uh, i guess that's going to be the 13th so so uh, September 13th for a live stream, we're going to be setting up and configuring um, uh, Ubuntu. And uh, hopefully we don't run into any bugs. I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen. But regardless, thanks for watching, folks. I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.